Well, we celebrate having 8,000 miles on our MT-09, but there's some service to be done at this point. Now, we've had several things that are a little unusual. We've had two flat tires in the space of this 8,000 miles, so we can't really be accurate about tire wear, but we have been religious about oil and new filters with every oil change and using genuine Yamaha oil filters and Yamalube that's called for in a manual. Now, because this is a brand new bike, it's actually, as I'm making this video, still under warranty, but that warranty is gonna be over in a, a month or so. And what I wanna have is I wanna have every moving part of that engine as, as good as I possibly can make it. And I want the reliability. This is a long-term bike. I'm not gonna flip it or sell it because I got it for a birthday present. It's mine for the duration. Well, it's amazing to me how time flies. <laughs> We've got 8,000 miles on the MT-09. Today we do for the oil change, adjust the chain, basically the, uh, the few things that are in the manual. But I wanted to get it done because we have some really nice riding weather coming up. We're supposed to have a whole week without rain. So let's hope this works out. First thing to do, what do we always do in this little small garage with too many motorcycles for the garage? Start moving motorcycles around, get the bike in position. So step one, bring the engine up to operating temperature. While we're doing that, I can get everything else ready, get it prepped up. Oil, filter, and chain today. So the engine's warmed up. We're in a comfortable spot under the fan and it's already starting to get hot. So the first thing obviously is uh, get the drain plug out and then while that's draining, go have a nice cup of coffee, give it some extra time to drain and we'll take the oil filter off too. We're gonna replace the filter and the oil. But before we do anything, we need a big cup of coffee. Now on an MT-09, the filter is right out where you can get at it nice and easily. Drain plugs in a very convenient spot. Just makes the job a little bit easier. Now because the exhaust pipes are hot, of course, try not to, uh, to burn my tender little fingers. There we go. Now, the trick is here, while the oil is draining, I'll go have a cup of coffee, relax a little bit, and give it plenty of time for the oil to come out at the very end. The last little shot glass always takes about 10 minutes. Any time you have an oil change to do, it's always good to have an extra cup of coffee anyway. So while that's draining, I'll do the couple of chores Karen has laid out for me and feed the fish and come back. That'll be ready to go. Okay, guys, if you want to eat, you got to help me do an oil change. Get in there and wipe the bike off. And getting a filter off relatively easy. At least there's no body work to take off on this bike. Some of the bikes like the R1s, there's a lot more, a lot more work to do this. But anyway, 8,000 miles in, in a way less than a year. Wow. Maybe I'll get my money's worth out of this bike. Now the MT-09 is a unique number, a Yamaha part number, and I got these from Partzilla. When I first bought the bike, I bought three of them. I didn't want to have to keep paying shipping on them. And I wanted genuine Yamaha oil filters, not the Pride of the West or whatever. And the little extra money that it costs to change the filter, as opposed to if you have any parts on the engine wearing out unnecessarily, Best investment, if you have a new bike, this is the best investment there is. One little tip, if, if you use genuine Yamaha oil filters, of course, they have a, a special grease. Probably doesn't really have to be special, but I don't, you don't even have to put the, the oil on that like you do on some of the aftermarket ones. They come dry. That's a real genuine Yamaha oil filter. Now, putting a new oil filter on, piece of cake on this bike, no body work in a way. Actually, there's nothing in the way here. But there's one final thing before I put the oil in and put the drain plug in. 
I like to get the bike to stand up straight and rock it back and forth, back and forth. And I'm, what I'm trying to do is get that last, last tiny little bit of oil out. And just, just being a little bit fanatical, I'll get the wrench on this. At a final setting I can get, the final torque setting with the wrench, just a little bit harder than hand tight. Okay, and we're good with that. Well, I'm not sure we're going to get a lot out of there, but whatever we get out, I don't want, don't want to cheat myself on this. If I can get a little, even a spoonful out. Okay, we're basically ready to put the drain plug back in and get some fresh oil put in. And like I said before, this is probably one of the easiest oil changes in the world of motorcycling. Really easy. Everything's out in the open. I want to use real Yamaha. What that oil that they recommend in the manual. Now on any motorcycle, there's a couple of do's and don'ts. And there's one big don't that I remember. Never overfill thinking that that's going to do the engine a world of good. It is not a good idea to overfill the oil. It's good to get it in the middle of the window. And I have a, I have a very time consuming way of doing this. Some people just say, oh, it takes 3.4 quarts. That, not, but if you didn't get every drop of oil out, each time you do it, what's going to happen? It builds up more and more oil. So what I do is I do it very patiently. Drain plug is in, filter is tight. And what I want to do, very carefully now, put in what an amount, I, until I can see some, when I stand the bike up, I can see it in the window. And that, what's going to happen and there's no oil in the filter then. But what happens is, well, I'll start the bike, let it idle for a few seconds, let the oil circulate, relax, I want it oil to back, drain back down because I want to be in the middle of that window, but I don't want, what I don't want to have happen is have to drain oil out. I can always add a little bit, add a little bit, add a little bit, I'm very patient about doing that. But once you put in that extra amount and it's over the top of the glass, yeah, it's a lot more work. Now this is where the patience pays off because I want to have it I just see the beginning of the oil in that window, and I don't see it yet. Stand the bike up. Okay, so I, what I, now I'm going to add a little bit each time, a little bit each time until I start to see it in that window. What I don't want to do is pour it all in and just boop. Now the next step on this, you can see the window, you see the oil, the bike is standing straight up. But now, there's no oil in the filter yet until I start the bike. Then that level is going to go down. I have to let it sit a while and then just top it off until it's right in the middle of that window. And now you can see with the bike standing up, the level is down. Now we can just very carefully, very slowly just add a little bit here, a little bit as it's draining back down. It's a good idea right now to let it sit for a few minutes, let all the oil drain down, and then just top it off till you're right in the middle of that window. So some information not everybody knows, and I found out the hard way, because some of these things, when you overfill the oil, it's not good for the engine, number one. Number two, you, you tend to have that problem, and everybody knows what it is, that when you go to put the bike in neutral at a traffic light, it goes clunk, because the clutch is dragging. And that's one way to just overfill the oil, and you'll see how quick that happens. Okay, so this is now where I'm going to take patient. I'm just going to do a little bit at a time because I want to be real careful not to overfill it. I basically want to put in, if I really was cute about it, the, the amount of oil that's in the oil filter. The only problem is I don't know exactly how much that is. So I'm going to do it very carefully. And each time I do it, just t get the bike straight up and down and check that level in the window until I have it exactly right. And just a nick of time, I see my grandson's here to help me. He's here for the day today. Just in a nick of time, if only I could get him to do all this work. You have an hour? You got a new game? Wow. An hour. I thought you were going to help me do an oil change. Not really, huh? So right now it looks like we're exactly where we want to be. Boy, that couldn't be better. Wow, is that good. Uh, I'm very happy with that. 
Okay, so all that's all it's left now is to do the chain and log in. Any, anything else I'm looking at here that I suspect? Nope. And then give the bike a thorough cleaning and we're ready for another ride. Okay there, the bike is level now. I've got it up level. We're in the middle. The engine's been run. The oil filter's filled. And we're, at, we're actually ready to go to the chain, get the chain adjusted. So now what I always use, this is just ordinary diesel fuel in a little spray bottle. And what I like to do is, when I'm going to adjust the chain, the first thing I want to do is get it clean. I want to get all the dirt off it. Then I want to chain wax it. Now, there's a very unique thing about some bikes. Turbo Steve brought this point up, and I tend to agree with him. I think he's right on the money. When you buy a brand new bike, at least I've noticed, you really don't need to adjust the chain anywhere as near as much as when you put an aftermarket chain on a bike. I don't know why that is. There's something mysterious going on there. I don't know if Yamaha or Suzuki or whoever just buys better chains or maybe it's all in our imagination. but Or that the chain and then first 5,000 miles is still pretty clean and still well lubricated. But I've noticed no matter what brand of aftermarket chain I put on a bike, it requires way more adjustments than this bike with 8,000 miles has only had a very few chain and they've already been the tiniest of adjustments. So, and we, what I do right now, I keep the chain clean and I keep it with chain wax on it. Maybe that's part of it, I don't know. I know some people don't touch it at all, they just, just replace the chain, I guess. Anyway. We're within spec, so I'm not even going to worry about it. That's pretty close. Now, again, it's, it's something I don't really understand, and maybe, to put, maybe Turbo Steve is on to something. I wish somebody knew whether these chains... See, I'm sure Yamaha, because these bikes are under warranty, they don't want to have a chain issue. And they know some of their customers are not going to grease the chain, or, and they don't want to have to be responsible if something happens. That might be it. These chains might be real expensive, too. I never priced one out on Partzilla. But if you wanted to use a real Yamaha chain, you'd have to break, take this swing arm bolt out. Now, I don't know. We're going to find out. And by the way, this is the product I've been using. And what I did to get a discount on this, and on Amazon of all places, they had a sale. If you bought four at a time, you, you got like the the fourth one free or something. I wound up getting, I figured I'd be good for quite a while, and it is. And this this does not wind up, unless you put it on, overdo it or whatever, it doesn't wind up on the back wheel like some of the other synthetic ones do, or the ones that are made out of other chemicals, I guess. And it keeps the chain from rusting. And I'm sure once the chain rusts, that rust gets into the links, even if you have a seal chain. So all that's left here, I log into maintenance. There's not been a lot of maintenance. The biggest maintenance on this bike is I got two flat tires already. Other than that, it's and when I put the quick shifter on and, and pretty much it's been maintenance free except for adjusting the chain. Now anytime I do an oil or a filter, I'll always let the bike run five minutes over my clean driveway and even if one drop comes out and sometimes you do leave a, a drop of oil there and then carefully check make sure we have we don't have a problem because i don't want to have a problem once i'm out on the open road so basically i've had this bike 11 months 8,000 miles my uh, the only thing i've managed to change i've lowered the forks that little bit i need to have a few more rides on it before i decide what's the next step on that I've played with the suspension and pretty much gone back to the, the standard settings that I did right in the beginning. Making it too stiff doesn't work. Where I ride, it's way too bumpy. And making it like a goal wing, mm, I don't know. You know, I don't really need that. So I've wound up pretty much what the, what the manual calls for, middle average settings. I found out after all the tires and things that we've had on the bike, I do like the Michelin 5s. But I still don't know how long they're going to last. That's still up in the air. But we'll know by the end of the year, I hope. and uh, Or by the next time we have to buy tires, we'll know anyway. 
But all the people that have had the Michelin Fives on bigger and more powerful bikes, like the one fella had a Hayabusa, he said he had a lot of miles on it, looked pretty good to me and, uh, and other people. But certainly, if all else fails, I can always put Michelin Twos on it. It was fine with the Michelins. I like Michelin tires. I don't want to, truth in advertising, they're easier to mount than anything else that I've ever mounted. So that, that's part of it, because I do mount my own tires. So my grandson's here. We're brewing up some coffee because I need a cup of coffee. I raced through this job because I knew he was coming today. I wanted to get this done so that I can put him back in a pitching rotation and we'll be ready to ride the next time we have an available time slot. So I hope you did enjoy the video. And there's little things that maybe you make it easier or make it better. And, and the only thing I can say about the MT-09, if you've never ridden one and they have a Yamaha test day, go ride one. You might really like it. And it's not an expensive bike. It's two things that I really like. And it really is a comfortable, all-around, all-weather fighter. So, again, hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching. So if you're new to the channel, I try to share some motorcycle-related information that may or may not be useful, depending on your skill level. Every day, almost every day, anyway. We try to share the rides, we try to share the meetups, the parts we make, the parts we test. The things that work and sometimes the things that don't work out as well as we thought. But we're in the middle of doing this Michelin 5 tire testing. And YouTube is a great way to share the adventure of motorcycling. And hopefully we will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.